All right, next up for you guys, we have Bill Burr. Yes, Bill Burr. Inside the crosshairs, this just dropped. So let's check it out. We have absolutely no idea what's coming up. So let's just uh, get right into That's it, That's off of his we? podcast. Yep. Shout out to uh, Alan Palin, I think, is the guy that makes all those kind of compilation videos where he animates or a video, like whatever, comp compiles stuff around it. So shout out and let's check it out. Beautiful. Ready? One, two, three. It's like a boss. So I keep going to this channel and they actually had this unbelievable show. It was basically about the bird and magics of like Marine Corps and Army snipers throughout the history hmm. of the U.S. military. They had the Michael Jordans of snipers. The Michael Jordans. Damn. And they had this dude, man. It was fucking, it was the most fascinating goddamn show I've seen in a long time. And I, and I stumbled on it because I didn't want to watch the Sports Center, you know, the Sports Center, watch Sports Center and listen to me. You know, the Celtics didn't get it done. You know, they just, you know, <laughs> there's things to do and they didn't do it. They didn't get it done. I can't fucking watch that yes. shit. Yes. Great players believe. Thank you, Brian Bill. saying, I'm going to roll these dice and I better not crap out. I know. I got it. They lost. <laughs> uh, yep. And I also didn't want to watch Kobe jump up on the scorer table and do his one, two, three, four, five, five rings. The final 12 to shot the Mavs at Staples. <laughs> Don't miss wow. this episode of Timeless Lakers tomorrow at 8, only on time, one or two. Uh, okay, <laughs> he really should okay. be doing is counting how many fucking points he had that weren't from the foul line. <laughs> this guy's unable to make shots, and Brian able to put it in. Yeah. That won't go. Brian drives to the basket. Sorry, had to get one more in. Um, <laughs> so they showed this dude, like, uh, remember uh, that big battle in Fallujah? I guess it was in 2004, if you can fucking believe it. It was already like six years ago. And there was this Marine Corps sniper who had th like 32 kills in 30 days. The sniper, Ethan Place, 32 kills. And they were talking up. This guy was like Damn. shooting through like a softball size hole at targets that were like, Four, five hundred yards away, Damn. and it, something, it had accuracy up to six hundred yards. Six fucking football fields, all right. And you're peeking out from behind the rubble. I think it's okay. <laughs> and then, blam! Wow! Holy shit! This guy's a psycho. It's killing people. This is captivating. Don't pick it up. Oh, she. Don't you fucking pick it up. Nah, kid. Nah, kid. Ugh. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. You're fucking oh the back God. of your head gets blown out. Holy and shit. And they were talking about what a psychological mind fuck that was. Yeah. And then they're also, they try to find you, but they can't peek their heads out because this guy was so fucking badass, like Rick Barry from the foul line. Known for his underhanded free throw <laughs> shooting technique, Barry shot 90% from the charity stripe for his career. I'm dead. Beast mode. He's picking these dudes off. Beast mode. And then he'd pick the dudes off who would try to drag the dead dude out of the street, just like in Saving Private Ryan, but reverse. <laughs> Because <laughs> it was an American guy doing it, and uh, oh man, it, it was it was absolutely fascinating. Then they went they after they were talking about that guy, and he has to sit there. And those guys, what they do on the other side is they just start lobbing like uh, what is that mortar? Those you know they stick it in that tube and it goes boom, you know boom. it shoots over a couple boom. of condos. And he goes, you just got to sit there and hope one doesn't have your name on it. <laughs> because there was no roof on top, they would just start dropping mortars. So you just kind of hope one doesn't have your name on it. You know? Jesus. Why do I watch action movies where there's actors who pretend to be badass when you can watch shit like that? It was, it was one of the fucking manliest things I've ever seen in my yeah. life. This guy was just picking people off. He has to take into consideration crosswinds, how quickly these guys are running. He was going after the guys like the 
was like a video game. Like the RPG guys were like worth like 2,000 points. You know, if you just got oh some guy God. running across the street yeah. trying to get a fucking tabbouli salad that was worth tabbouli like 25. Salad. Anyways, so then after they Sam. got done talking, talking about that guy, they they Savage. talked about the, they they cut to this dude <laughs> in um, in Vietnam who had like 93 confirmed kills. The sniper, Carlos Hathcock. Oh my God! Yeah, Marine Corps definitely legend. killed Barry. And uh, he went head anyone? to head <laughs> with some other badass sniper. Uh, who was on the Viet Cong, and the Viet Cong guy spotted him. This is how badass the Viet Cong guy was. He shot around by his foot as a challenge. With one shot, wow. he issues a challenge to Hathcock. Come and get me. I got wow. a gunner sergeant right outside my door by a hooch. And uh, I watched him die. Took a bow right then. I was gonna get him. Somehow or another. You know, this guy was Jesus. bored with picking off regular people, so he wanted to go mano a mano with this other sniper. And for like four days, they're tracking each other through the through the jungle. A little hunger game. You know, That's crazy. coming up on each other's flank, whatever the fuck that means. He sneaks around Halfcock's right flank for an ambush. One dude would be like 300 yards in front of the other dude, and then they'd be crawling on their fucking elbows, and somehow, by the time they were done, he'd be where that dude was, and then the other dude was where the other dude was. And we moseyed around and mingled around, and we worked around to where I was in his old spot, and he was in my old spot. And just one day, the Viet Cong guy got unlucky, and it was the afternoon sun, and it, it glinted off his fucking... Whatever, what is that? This is his gun scope. And this guy literally did the shot from saving Private, Private Ryan. Like through the. Wow. Damn! No. We got him! Stay down! He shot it through Bro. the guy's scope and blew out the back of his fucking head. Ooh, and the guy stuff. had a southern accent talking about went right through the scope, didn't even touch the sides. How do I know he would have killed me? Because I, sh I shot right through his cup, right straight through his cup. Didn't touch the side. Oh, God. This didn't touch the side. And it didn't do his eyesight no good in that side either. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's so happy, bro. Oh, my God. It was God. great. It was like he was talking God. about some fish he caught. Yeah. Hey, you ain't shit, buddy. I was down. I <laughs> caught a fucking fish on dry land, motherfucker. Top that one, bitch. He was doing that but talking about <laughs> killing guys. I don't know. I, I wish I knew the name of the show. But I found it absolutely fascinating. One of those shows that's so manly that you you, get, you almost get insecure watching that you have to somehow start <laughs> fantasizing that you're the guy in it. You know, and you start talking Morris. shit like you're the guy getting interviewed and you're whispering to yourself on the couch and then you catch yourself. Oh, oh Jesus God. Christ, am I fucking crazy? Yeah. Barry. <laughs> hey, Barry. I'll race you to the top. I, I can't. Sure you can. <laughs> Just wrap your leg around the rope and hold it with your foot. I, yeah, I can't. Barry, I hate that word. What the hell is he talking to? Hey, you up there. You're not off again. <laughs> Get going. You know, Jeez. for the record, I was getting interviewed on Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone wonder why I'm in this business? All right. It is hot as <laughs> hell in here. I got to keep the windows closed. You know, when you say cunt every fucking three seconds, I got to keep the windows closed. Uh, <laughs> wow. All right. So a cunt doesn't get out of the window. Uh, I believe we're a Nielsen family. I never get picked oh for anything. Oh my god. Bro. Let's just stop it. Oh, that's so funny. Dude. Yo, that's bro. How <laughs> psycho do you have to be to be a fucking sniper like that, man? Oh, have all those skills, like that will definitely have a lasting impact on the way you perceive yourself. Talk about PTSD the or whatever. world, other people, the value other people present. How much empathy you have for other people. Yeah. These things all get affected. It's crazy, man. And that's real life for a lot of these for people. a lot of these people, man. I know because my mom is actually Lebanese. She grew up in Beirut and uh, she moved out at 17. Uh, and uh, she's seen people get shot on the street. She's, uh, I remember I've been there as a baby. I don't really have memories of bombings, but I've been told there was bombings even when I was there as a baby. And it's just like a regular everyday life thing, you know? You get out of your car. I remember my granddad would pray 
every single time when we go to the garage and we were like even going to the supermarket, you know, he would like pray on like just like mouth prayers, like just praying that the ride is safe because yeah. like it's normal, like getting bombed, like it was bombings all the time. And um, and it's just like, oh, everybody go to the staircase and like hide and all that stuff, you know, it was just everyday life. And, and then must affect you in many, many ways, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's some crazy stuff. That that's an everyday threat for some people. The like, meaning of life changes very much in those circumstances. The I value would say. of life, how yeah. you feel about personal loss, like how like it's crazy. It's it's insane. Like the way that the there's a, the the differences between like the way that death is processed in a war torn zone versus yeah. a peaceful zone. Absolutely, it's kind of just redefines a lot of the values you have and dispositions you have toward this, the concept of death, you know? I would definitely say so, man. I think we, uh, as Westerners or whatever, like people we live in, in this society here, we have no idea what it's like. It's a bubble. It's, it's like. a filter it's, bubble. Yeah, yeah. We're very much protected of all this. Yeah, you watch uh, Private Ryan and whatever, but that's like you're just still on your couch, like just so detached of it. It's just like a fictional thing for you. It's not really reality but for some people it is 100 percent. all right well we'll check you guys in the next video hopefully you found that as fascinating as we clearly did yeah. and we'll guys we'll see you guys on the uh on the other side so peace